Uh, Mr. Bullock here, and this is a review for Algebra 2 on polynomials and polynomial functions. This will be Chapter 5 in the Algebra 2 book that I'm following, that I'm teaching out of here. So uh, this is a board problem, you guys. So in 2003, the gross domestic product, GDP, of the United States was about 1.099 times 10 to the 13th dollars. Okay, well, that just that's a big number. That means move this decimal 13 places that way. But this is written in scientific notation. And the population in uh, 2003 was about 2.91 times 10 to the 8th. What was the per capita GDP in 2003? All right, well, what I'd like to do is just think of a smaller number, you guys, a smaller example. Let, let's just say uh, five families uh, you know, bought a lottery ticket together, and they won a million dollars. So what would their per family uh, value be? So this just would be a million dollars divided by five, which would be $200,000 apiece, okay? Uh, so that's the same thing we're doing up above right there. So we're just going to divide um, the dollars by how many people there are. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. And then I'm going to put these numbers over each other and these numbers over each other right there. All right, and then when I do this in the calculator, I get uh, 0.37766, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and here I subtract these exponents right here. So 13 minus 8 is 5. Now, you can put it in scientific notation if you want to, you guys. But what I'm going to do is, since they're talking about money, I'm going to just move, go ahead and move that decimal five places to the right. So, so I get about uh, 37,776 uh, per capita uh, for the gross domestic product, okay, in, 2000, in 2003. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. It's kind of a long lesson, so I'm going to go kind of fast right here. Okay, powers raised to powers. I'm going to multiply them, so it's going to be x to the 6th, y to the ninth. Okay, so I get that right there. And then, uh, so there's x to the 6th, y to the ninth. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my x exponent. So x to the 6th and x to the 4th is x to the 6th plus 4. So I finally get uh, x to the 10th, y to the ninth. Okay. Let's try another one here. All right, there's all kinds of correct ways to do this, you guys. I think I started off this way. I did powers to powers. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And then uh, 3 times 2 is positive 6 right there. All right, and then uh, this is highlighted in red right here because now we can subtract these exponents, you guys. You could have slid this down there right off the bat if you wanted to. That's okay. Um, it's going to get down there sooner or later, you guys. So this is going to be x to the negative 11th. This is going to be y to the 0 right here. Anything to the 0 equals 1, and then that x to the 11th goes downstairs. Okay, that's one correct way to do that. You could have recognized those canceled right there, and then these six x's go down here with these five that are down here, and that's how you get 1 over x to the 11th. Okay, either way is good. There's a, probably a couple other ways. So let's graph this polynomial function x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3. All right, going to do an xy chart, and I'm going to just plug in x equals negative 3. Okay, I got negative 42. x equals negative 2, I get negative 13. All right, I'm not going to graph those, I don't think. And there's the rest of them right there. So when I graph uh, those middle guys right there, okay, on this graph right there, I get those points right there. All right, now, we had a section that talked about, okay, this is a cube root right here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, and it's positive, you guys, so I know it's going up in this direction. It's going to go up like this, okay? So it has to go up like this. It starts down here, and it's going to go up. Now, it might have no humps. I call them humps. Or it might have um, uh, two humps because it's uh, one degree less than that. So, I mean, it's one uh, less than that. So, so it looks like on this graph, this is going to be a two-hump graph. So here's one hump going up. It's going to go up, and it's going to probably hump that down to get that one and then probably hump it back up that way so it has a, what would be called in pre-calculus a relative max right there and this would be a relative min I don't know what they call them in the book so I don't even think they call them that so it's a graph that kind of looks like that okay isn't that a beauty alright so something like that okay alright so perform the indicated operation here we're going to subtract so I'm going to distribute that negative through and then just combine like terms and there's the answer right there all right, this one here, we're going to multiply. I'm going to do what's called the claw method, you guys. So I'm going to multiply the x through on top, and then I'm going to multiply the y's through, or I'm sorry, the negative 4 through on the bottom. And so I get uh, the bluey and the ready right there, and then just combine like terms, and I get uh, that as my final answer. Okay, so, okay, I'm going kind of fast. Uh, it's just a big lesson, you guys. Okay, factor this. This is a sum of cubes. You need to recognize that's x cubed plus 5 cubed. Okay. If you don't know your cubes, I would, I would write them down and get, get used to them, you guys, all right? All right, so cubes happen like this, you guys. I taught it in class, uh, 
Oh, uh, heck, I don't know, section 5.3, I think. I, I think, I think, I forgot. So if it's a difference of cubes, they always go, if it's a sum or a difference of cubes, then it goes a binomial times a trinomial. So that's why it says by tri. And then I say soap it, you guys. The soap it means the S stands for same sign right here. The O stands for opposite sign right here. And this one stands for always positive. So same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So if that's a minus, that's the same. That's a minus. This is the opposite. This is a plus. This is always positive. If that's a plus, that's a plus because it's the same. This is the opposite, so this would be minus. This is always positive right here, okay? So then what you do is you square them, you guys. So, so heck, I didn't put that slide there. I wished I did, you guys. So then this guy, uh, this term here is this one squared, okay? This term over here is this one squared. And the guy in the middle is just the product of these two guys. So I know you guys can see the x plus 5 right there. Okay, square x is x squared. Square 5 is 25. And then multiply those two, and that's what goes in the middle. Okay, by times try, soap it. Same sign as that one. Opposite sign, always positive. Okay, S-O-A-P, soap. All right. All right, so here when you see four terms, I'm going to factor it by grouping. So I just grouped the first two and the second two. So I put this negative 9 in the second parentheses right there. So when I just left some space, there's my negative 9x minus 45. Okay, what well, can you GCF out of these two guys? I can pull an x squared out of that. I can pull a negative 9 out of that. You always pull that sign out right there. So it's negative, I'm going to pull a negative out. When I pull a negative out, it's going to change that to a positive. All right, so I'm going to pull the x squared out and the minus 9, and they, you're both left with a red x plus 5. So I'm going to factor that out, and then x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, x plus 3, x minus 3. Don't forget your x plus 5. Okay? All right, so this guy right here, I'm going to pull an x squared out, okay? And then I'm going to do what I call smiley face factoring. Multiply 18 times negative 10, which is negative 180. Factors of negative 180 that, that uh, also gives me negative 180 that adds to this term right there are negative 3 times 60. Okay, you could have done 60 times negative 3, but I think the 60 uh, will pair up with the 10 better and the negative 3 will pair up with the 18 better. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this polynomial replacing the 57x with negative 3x plus 60x. Okay, so that's all I did right there. Okay, then I factor this guy by grouping, just like that last one right there. So I'm going to pull a 3x out of these two guys. I'm going to pull a 10 out of these two guys. And you'll see they'll have a common factor right there, 6x minus 1. Okay, so you can pull the 6x minus 1 out, and you have 3x plus 10. Okay, don't forget the original GCF that you pulled out right there. Okay, all right, so let's divide, you guys. Okay, when I'm dividing by a binomial, you can do synthetic division. And I love synthetic division, you guys. Excuse me. When I'm dividing by uh, a binomial, your box number, I call it, is always opposite of your factor number right there. So if I'm dividing by this factor right there, then it's going to be negative right there. Okay? So I'm going to slide this 4 down right here. So straight down. And then I'm going to multiply that times the box number. So I slid the 4 down. 4 times negative 7. 4 times negative 7 gives me negative 28. Okay, that's how I get this number. Then I add 29 plus a negative 28 is 1. Then I'm going to multiply it again times the box number right there. So negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. That's what goes right there. Okay, and I just did the rest, you guys. Then I added these two guys. 4 plus negative 7 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Then I add these guys. Negative 14 plus 21 is 7. Times the box number is negative 49. And add. Okay, now... You guys, we started with uh, a fourth root equation. So this is going to be, I call it my condensed equation. It's going to be one degree less than this guy. So this is going to be x to the third. So it's going to be 4x to the third plus x uh, squared minus 3x plus 7. And then this is my remainder right here. Okay, So my remainder is going to be over what I was dividing by. Now I'll take that. That looks pretty groovy to me, you guys, but um, your book likes to float this negative and make that a negative right there, so that's how your book's going to do that. But either one's okay with me. Okay? All right, when you're dividing by not a binomial, and that doesn't, that's not a binomial because there's a 0x inside of there. Okay? In fact, there's a 0, um, yeah, there's a 0x cubed inside of there. When it's not a binomial, that's a quadratic term, you guys. Uh, you got to do long division on this, okay? So don't forget your zero x's because it's going to appear way down here. 
All right, so then I do this, you guys. I, I'm going to go 2x squared times what gets me 4x squared. Well, that's, gonna, that's where this came from. Then I'm going to multiply this 2x squared times that times that times that. Okay, and that's what goes down underneath right there. Okay? All right, and then I'm going to do subtraction, okay? You know, when I subtract, I slide the next number down. Okay, you guys with me? When I subtract, 0 minus 0 is still 0. Negative 16 minus a negative 4 is negative 16 plus 4, which is negative 12. Slide that down. Then I do it again. 2x squared times what will get me 0x cubed? Well, times 0x, uh, uh, okay? So then I multiply everything over here times 0x. This times 0x times 0x times 0x, and that's what gets me these guys right here. Okay, I still got to go through that process. You'll see why in a second. It's going to need it for the spacing here. So, so when I subtract, I slide down the next guy right here, negative 12 minus 0, 9 minus uh, 0. Slide that down one more time. 2x squared times what gets me negative 12x squared? That's going to be a negative 6. Okay, so then, all right, now I can't divide anymore because 2x squared won't go into that. So this is my remainder. So we start at the top. It's this. I'm going to take out the 0x. So 2x squared minus 6 plus my remainder over what I was dividing by, 2x squared minus 2. Okay, there's the answer right there. Alrighty, almost done, you guys. Okay, given that x plus 6 is a factor of uh, that uh, polynomial, uh, factor the polynomial completely. Okay, since this is a factor, I'm going to go ahead and plug in uh, negative 6 for my box number. And I did it already right there. Going to get a remainder of 0 when I synthetically divide. And then I just factor this trinomial. Okay, so I'm going to save us some time. Uh, when I factor this simple trinomial, it gets me 2x plus 1, x minus 3. Don't forget your original factor, x plus 6. So there it is right there. Alrighty, uh, one more thing. Oh yeah, the rational roots theorem. Find all zeros of uh, this polynomial function, okay, they don't give me a zero. So what I got to recognize is the constant, um, the leading coefficient is this one right here. It's one, okay, and the constant term is negative 12. So it's all factors of, and I say uh, right number over left number. So all factors of 12 over one. So one goes into 12, two goes into 12, three goes into 12, four goes into 12, six does, 12 does. So these are all the factors. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. There's uh, Actually, and then there's more than that. No, 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 that's it. Then, uh, so those are my possible box numbers. So hopefully, one will work. So when I test one, I find out I get zero. So good. All right. So what happens is, is this is my condensed quadratic x squared plus seven x plus twelve. So I'm going to factor that guy. So x squared plus seven x plus twelve factors to x plus three x plus four. So then I set this factor equal to zero. X minus one equals zero. I get x equals one x plus 3 equals 0, I get x equals negative 3. And then when I subtract 4 on both sides, I get x equals negative 4 on that. Okay? Goes kind of fast, you guys. All right, if you're in my class, I would assign that. And that should get you nice and ready and to ace my test, hopefully. Take care, you guys.